where we invite you. You know, we're going to do these series of panel discussions and webinars over the next few months. And uh, a lot of you can be great speakers during these discussions um, for, for us and for uh, the audience. Um, so we'd like to invite you to be speakers um, during the event. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other giveaways during, during the session. Um, uh, so I think that's it from me. Uh, stay on mute when you're not speaking, but when you'd like to speak, either raise your hand using the raise hand feature or feel free to raise your actual hand if you'd like um, and uh, ask any questions, uh, make any comments. Uh, you can use the chat feature. Uh, so that's about it from me. Um, uh, I'm going to pass over to Yash. Yash uh, heads YNS Consulting, which is one of the boutique consulting firms focused on healthcare uh, within our ecosystem. Uh, we've collaborated on a few opportunities over the last um, over the last six months since we've been working together. Uh, so just a real pleasure to have you here, Yash. And over to you. Thank you so much, Varun, and uh, I am really glad to be a part of this ecosystem and uh, to work all the other, uh, you know, attendees over there. I'm sure you would like to know more about uh, Consolidate On, and you should definitely, you know, uh, get in touch with Elsa or Varun. It's a fantastic uh, thing that uh, Varun has started, and I'm really looking forward to uh, working with uh, them in on a long-term basis as well. So uh, without further delay, I would like to go ahead and uh, start uh, with the presentation uh, and the webinar. So, so basically, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you so much for taking out time. Uh, we have sh uh, scheduled this for one and a half hours. It's a interactive session. You can have Q&A at the end. You can have it in between. However you feel like uh, you can, you know, uh, the intention is uh, you take the most out of uh, this uh, uh, one and a half hour time that you're spending uh, today. Um, it would be great if you could, you know, in just in the chat box or somewhere, you know, just uh, tell who you are, uh, you know, just name, designation, etc. Uh, so it would be good for everyone, you know, uh, interacting as well. Uh, there is a Q&A button. Uh, you can post your questions there. You can also raise your hand. So some of the ground rules. Uh, we're good to go. Elsa, should we start? You can see my screen? Yep, absolutely. We're good to go. Okay, okay, great. So uh, today's discussion is about transformation of healthcare industry and future outlook. So we're going to talk a lot about, uh, I'll just take you to the next uh, slide where you can see. So we can, you know, I'll just give you a quick overview about myself, uh, what should be the key takeaways, what is the global scenario, what are the challenges in healthcare industry currently, then what has happened due to COVID, what are the gaps over there, what kind of customized service offerings we see coming down the line, what is happening in the healthcare technology front of things, how healthcare is evolving as an experience-based industry, what are the future outlooks? The conclusion and further question and answers, if any. Right. So just a quick brief about myself. Won't bug you down with a lot of details. I'm a charter accountant and MBA from uh, US. I've been uh, in the US for some time. I was working with Deloitte, came back to India, with, uh, where we've started this uh, uh, boutique healthcare consulting firm. We generally uh, help hospitals to commission themselves uh, apart from commissioning, we also do operational management of the hospitals. And we also do certain uh, pharmaceuticals and other uh, uh, inorganic growth strategies projects, if you could say. And we are also doing a lot of, uh, with the help of Consolidon, we're doing a lot of cross-border m &E things which are under pipeline. Uh, now, what should be the key takeaways, what I would want uh, if, uh, you know, it, it allows that, you know, one, we should attain an understanding of customized service offerings to manage super speciality hospitals, recognize and use the potential of organic and inorganic growth of hospital sectors in India and worldwide. A newly gained perspective of healthcare as an experience-based industry, you know, what, what I, I'm using this term again and again, when we go there, I'll introduce you further what I mean by experience-based industry. Uh, developed need-based infrastructure to optimize the results in patient loyalty and engagement. 
assess whether you need to reposition yourself, seek assistance from us, etc., etc. So a very uh, good quote from Dr. Bernard Moon. Uh, he has been a Nobel Prize winner. So do as much as possible for the patient and do as little as possible to the patient. So again, this is something which he also speaks about is more about the experience or about the, the care. But he says that, you know, do as little as possible to the patient to disturb them. Correct. Moving on, what is happening in the global scenario in terms of uh, healthcare uh, expenditure? So you'll see wherever, you know, in terms of uh, the economies, uh, you know, whether we talk globally, North America, Western Europe, Asia, Latin America, MISA, and other, other transitioning economies, you'll see that there is a very good growth rate across all these countries, irrespective of their, um, you know, their, their uh, how developed they are uh, or where in the life cycle they are. So, you know, there, there is continuing, uh, you know, uh, growth in terms of expenditure. So healthcare spending is expected to rise at a kegger of 4% over 20 to 24. Which again, in fact, even in the uh, kegger, it's higher than what it was previously. So there is a lot of shift happening towards, you know, healthcare sector, people are looking at this as a very stable economy, uh, stable, uh, you know, uh, sector, you can say. Uh, global healthcare spe spending as a share of GDP will remain about 10.3%, which is, you know, a bit higher than what it was in 2019. Uh, that being said, it's very different from countries to countries. Somewhere it's, you know, upwards of 14, 15, 18%. Somewhere it's, you know, about two, two and a half, even 1.5% at some countries. And it will continue, uh, the spending, the per capita spending will continue to be unevenly spread from US to Pakistan, you know, 12,700 in US to $37 in Pakistan. So that's the per capita spending uh, on healthcare, right? So what uh, typically, what are the healthcare systems that exist around the world? You know, there are government funded national systems. Uh, wherein the government is doing A to Z about uh, healthcare, you know, they, uh, they, there's virtually nil uh, existence of private players. It's completely governed uh, by the government. Then there's, there's a second model, which is again similar to, you know, the first one where government is taking care of the entire healthcare, but there are certain fees for users. They have to pay some money out of it. They could be, it could be in the form of compulsory, uh, you know, insurances. It could be in the form of compulsory social security deductions, etc. Then there are, uh, you know, again, a mix of health insurance system, wherein there are governments, there are citizens, there's a mixture you, you do certain percentages funded by the government, certain per percentage by the citizens. There is a system of copay, uh, etc. And and fourth, which we are seeing a lot is happening uh, in terms of a lot of economies is you know decentralized private systems which run either for profit or not for profit. So here, you know, typically uh, this this is seen mostly in you know relatively lesser developed economies where you know government has not been able to cope up to the requirements and thus private players have emerged uh, more dominantly so but still there are systems which have hybrid uh, you know pay mechanism and hybrid care mechanism so moving on to the challenges in healthcare industry and now here what i mean is not just you know a typical, you know, uh, area centric or a, a geography centric. So what is happening overall in terms of healthcare? So one, there is a, a huge, uh, you know, difference between capacity and demand in terms of regular care, epidemic and pandemic. Of course, we have faced, you know, what is the scarcity of beds in pandemic starting from New York, uh, you know, all the way to uh, Mumbai, etc. We have seen, you know, the scarcity of beds 
that too in bigger cities then when you, when you come down to even remote uh, areas you know pandemic has been a you know an eye opener for the entire world but even generally when you see you know uh, what happens is you won't really find tertiary care facilities in remote areas tertiary, what I, what i mean by tertiary care is you know like uh, your cardiac your neurological your onco etc etc so you might probably get primary and secondary care uh, uh, facilities but tertiary care is virtually non existent uh, in in most of the geographies and this this is something which is challenging because then people have to move people have to go out of their comfort zone to see a doctor and all those things uh there is a disintegrated care delivery method you know there is a very low attention on prevention and uh, holistic well being and of late you will realize and you, you might have you know even felt right now that a lot of thing is changing you know uh, towards getting a holistic well being right now whatever we are doing is all corrective there is nothing preventive action you know, at at most cases that we are taking uh, off for so that is another big challenge you know uh, out there uh, now unavailability of complete health history of patient so i would say even in the so i at least uh, what what we feel you know healthcare uh, in the us and especially digital parts of healthcare is one of the best in us you know you've got uh, hl7 you've got hipaa compliance you've got this that etc but even if there you know my health records are linked with the social service number but it's not very easy to just extract it now this is i'm talking about something about us but when we come out to other populations you know there are countries especially you know southeast asia middle east and africa where even the hospitals do not have the entire uh, technology backup where the entire health history of the patient is there now what this happens now this this typically uh, you know uh, makes a bottleneck for the care and uh, as a result you know it's not just the patient who suffered but it's also the doctors because they they're not really aware about the entire health history uh, because it's not recorded somewhere uh, on and it's not really easily available of course people are trying to change the uh, healthcare information management system or hms as we speak about it that is coming into play but that even if it is exist it exist under a smaller umbrella you know till date there, there's no uh, you know virtually no uh, central system or something like that which is governed that you know yes this is this is yash sabu yash sabu is here or there you'll get his records so that is a really big challenge in the industry uh there is very very less implementation of personalized medicine so uh, you know people are it's all sops driven you could say it's all you know uh, it's it's all very generic that is happening right now in the industry which is bound to change you know like uh, when, when if if i'll just take the example of covid and you know this is something because we all can resonate to you know there was a time when they say that remdesivir should be taken then uh, that there was no uh, you know uh, proven outcome of it then who said that you know you can just skip remdesivir so it, this is one of the examples but typically what is happening here is you know uh, it's it's a lot you know driven on sops it's all on that basis so a lot of personalized medicine has to come up there has to be some uh you know understanding of the history it is connected over there it also has to be connected with you know allergies and other things that are coming up then uh, the another challenge is what are the clinical protocol during during emergencies you know uh, there are some protocols there are uh, some countries have it some countries don't have it and, and this was an eye opener you know covid was an eye opener for everybody like what what exactly is the protocol what do we do so you know that is another challenge that is there in the industry which uh, has to be addressed uh, and there is a very limited access to healthcare systems so what what this means is you know when as a patient or you know as as a uh, you know let's say someone outside the ecosystem of the healthcare system wants to you know access maybe the doctors so there's a limit 
to there that you know the doctor is not available right now the doctor would come later etc etc or there's only you know uh, you could there's only limited ways you can interact with the doctors similarly when you go for other things you know uh, in terms of the entire healthcare staff then there's a lot of limitations around there you know uh, so that is a big challenge over there uh there is irregularity by patients in following their treatment program now this is a challenge which patients have created for themselves you know the moment so let's say i i i am uh, uh, i have a chronic disease it could be anything uh, you know just just let's say uh, i'm suffering from high bp the moment my bp comes into control you know at 120 or 130 or 140 i i i you know i on my own start you know taking up you know some other uh, uh, precautions or may go for alternate medicine which is i am not discouraging that but it is just that you know patients do not really take the the required care or the required understanding to follow their own treatment so that is becoming a challenge and how this will be addressed we'll just cover uh, that uh, later and of course uh, you know you guys if you have any questions any discussions you know just you can just feel free to stop me we can discuss further so all of these challenges that i that that we are talking here will be addressed in the later parts you know what is happening and how how these things are changing and also the last challenge i want to talk about is so there's a there's a very low remote monitoring um, right now which is changing and this, this is what is going to change uh, the entire healthcare dynamics right so what has happened due to covid you could see you know typically uh, earlier a lot of a lot of interactions used to happen uh, in physically right now because there were restrictions during the covid era and you could not travel or you would not want to travel or not to go to abroad like khoshyal sorry okay ha to navroz mubarak uh else if you can just see if there's a question or if not you can just mute the participant for some time being right yep done yeah. so uh yeah so we were discussing you know what happened during the covid era and now what is going to happen post it you know uh, so there were earlier a lot of strain on workflows infrastructure supply chain everything was physical right and people were coming there so you know there had to be good infra the people were coming there so there had to be good uh, workforce and ek minute nahi main nahi padi hu main subah se yahi kar rahi hu ek minute okay okay um maybe uh, elsa got to do something uh, make them an attending so they can't have mute yeah so yeah yeah we'll we'll continue sorry about that guys so uh, you know there, there's a lot of things uh, that were happening pre covid which is now changing you know people are coming towards tele medicine people are coming for virtual uh, platforms they are using you know lots of methods uh, to to avoid going there as much as possible physically and also using digital platforms now this is something we all understand yes it's absolutely there now what is what is going to happen with this you know A lot of public and private hospitals have to adapt and innovate accordingly. You have to gear up your digital system. That is, of course, one of the biggest thing. Along with that, your workforce has to be ready about it. If I am going to a healthcare, uh, you know, uh, a hospital, I, and I just want to virtually just have a consultation with the doctor, and if if i just you know dial the attendant has no clue the assistant has no clue the rmo has no clue of how how the system works so it's not going to work so your workforce has to be ready it has to be you know uh, there has to be a very good collaboration in terms of uh, the entire ecosystem over there right the second part is you know while this is happening you know entire healthcare cannot be done virtually you know there are certain things that you need um, like you know basic uh, parameters like your bp your blood level your sugar sorry your oxygen level and other things so this now then has to go out in a way where you know uh, the iot would come in internet of things would come in uh, healthcare uh, 
monitoring devices would come in and etc so we'll talk about that later when we get to the technologies part of things also a lot of public and private collaboration needs to happen you know it could be for vaccinations it could be for therapies etc because right now and, and and a lot of us so we we are about a year into covid and we would have recognized that you know once you are out of the covid system and etc but you still see at least you know one maybe in 100 or 200 that has you know a lot of long term side effects so that cannot go out unless there is a collaboration between public and private uh, players and uh, there is an exchange of data your data would play a critical role you know what are the symptoms because we have to act fast it's, it's not something that you know uh, can take years to gain maturity so we have to have that data analytics and ai built into the system so that corrective measures can be taken as soon as possible right so uh, no not not talking too specific uh, yeah mr tushar i think uh, you got a question so you can yeah. just Unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, On the previous slide, I had a question. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, how how do you define uh, virtual, vis-a-vis, -vis, tele, and digital? So the boundaries seemed blurred here. So I would like to know the exact definition of what you mean by virtual. Right. So tele, I think, uh, is is more about you know uh, when you're just doing. Uh, it uh, over you know maybe uh, phone or something like that digital is again wherein you just uh, interacting this is uh, what is uh, happening wherein uh, at virtual you know we are not just you know talking about an interaction over a platform it's again with uh, you know collaboration about your um, devices etc so if if i take take an example you know uh how a typically virtual care model works is you know if, if there is someone with a prolonged illness or some uh, you know uh, diseases etc and set up at home so you would have an icu monitor over there uh, sorry not an icu you will have a monitor patient monitor over there which will take readings which will then feed into the hmis system the uh, healthcare management information system of the hospital and it would be available to the doctor virtually it could be over a uh, laptop or it could be over phone or something like that so that is what we uh, differentiate here between tele versus virtual versus digital does that answer your question yeah okay great okay. thanks thanks yash my my pleasure so uh so moving ahead you know what are the gaps that we see uh, overall in the industry so one is the accessibility gap which is over there uh, it could be due to physical reasons uh, mostly you know at the remote locations um, care delivery gap which is uh, so generally you know you will find a lot of surveys and if you just go on google you know you'll find surveys from deloitte mckinsey ey everybody that you know uh, it's so wherever a patient is dissatisfied about 90 to 95 percent times it's because of the non medical reasons or non uh, care related reasons it's it's because you know uh, the the non medical care over there is not good it could be long wait times in admissions it could be long wait time in discharge it could be the facility is not good etc etc a uh, challenge another challenge over there is information gap you know uh, and this is uh, is is uh, you know increasing day by day wherein you know the information received at the patient level is is inadequate maybe uh, from the patient standpoint or also what is happening is because you know people are so much into digital uh, you know uh, it have so much access to digital uh, information etc so people go and google and then they have follow up questions and this and that so the information has to flow to the to the patient uh, that is there service quality gap you know uh, we just discussed about it and uh, you know how how it is treated uh, on the entire non medical platform uh, of things you know it could be the food it could be you know discharge times it would be uh, various you know just like the infra etc etc uh what is the other big issue in terms of opd is again a long wait time 
certain countries or certain economies do a fairly good enough job of it but again uh, you know there are there are two aspects of it one is you know it's not just um, that you are there and you have to wait for the doctor to give you time uh, but it's also you need to get an appointment so even if appointment is taking too long it's taking you know a week or two weeks and then you have to rush to emergency and do uh, those sort of things so that is also a very big gap out there um uh, right now as we all know this this very limited online consultation module available uh, doctors are also not uh, too keen about it uh, in fact many countries typically discourage restricted online consultation however japan uh, of late has you know permitted an 100% online consultation so people can do that i know certain economies where it's not allowed online prescription is also not allowed so that that is also a very big gap in this thing uh feedback i think i think virtually and this is across uh, the globe we can say you know feedback mechanism is is really poor in this service based industry when we come to hotels it's different when we come to uh, other sectors it's different but when when we are talking about hospitals especially the ones which have been you know 3 to 5 years plus in their operations the feedback mechanism uh, you know one people to generate no even take feedback even if they do what is the outcome of that feedback has in has it been you know escalated to the right person etc so that is another big gap uh, in in the industry now what we we have discussed about challenges we have discussed about gaps so now you know what what is it that is going to happen so we have to come up with a lot of customized service offerings so you would see uh, that you know somebody just came up with a covid home care package now in this you you know the patient is just at home maybe do one or two offline consultation doesn't have to come again and again so this is a typical customized service offering now what this does it reduces your administrative cost you know the the person is not coming to your clinic again and again so you have you know a lot of administrative cost you are reducing and this is at a very micro level i'm discussing when we talk about you know doing it at the larger scale then your uh, uh, administrative cost uh, becomes a, a good good factor uh, when we are doing a lot of virtual offerings when we are uh, making uh, good health packages for geriatric care for uh, prenatal care and other things uh, this reduces the total cost of care to the patient so in fact even for the patient to going from one place to another that is another cost and you know managing n number of things you know taking leaves etc so this this reduces that uh, issue as well this increases the efficiency of care you know right now it's just like how everybody is gone digital you know uh, earlier if there was a webinar we would be you know flying off to a place we would be staying at a hotel for maybe a 2 hour or 5 hour session or something like that right now you just there you click it you go and then you go to the next one so this is again what is going to help the doctors wherein you know uh, their care delivery will be efficient which would in turn help the hospitals as well so overall it would just increase the revenue and growth of the hospitals now what are the factors that would involve all this so one of it is a very big digital transformation and of course i know everybody is aware about you know there is a need of digital transformation not just in this industry but across every other industry which which we all agree to. but what we mean about digital transformation and this uh, is coming from uh, uh, deloitte uh, research done very recently so we have to digital transformation is change management process to close the gap between demand and supply right and it's not just from one uh, aspect of things so there are various benefits to patients benefits to healthcare system to clinicians so for for patients it's empowering to monitor and self manage their health right uh, you you're on digital you can see what's happening you know what what are your levels how are you progressing etc increasing access to more timely and convenient care so uh, you know now if you just want to book an appointment you go through the app you just book an appointment uh, and and you get a confirmation and other things uh, improve uh, medication management you get reminders alerts your your prescription is about to end 
or maybe even just regular alert that you know before this after this you have to just take this you know uh, daytime uh, apps have come up uh, so and also this enhances patient experience uh, in terms of you know getting things fast getting things right knowing transparently what is happening uh, this all enhances the patient experience as well it enables more predictive and uh, preventive uh, care to the patient so we, we are more aware what is happening the history is recorded it is available that so these are the benefits for the patients for the healthcare systems you know it's enabling integration through greater uh, interoperability and coordination of care pathways so here you know uh, the more digital you go there are n number of variables variables that come in and then you get to see whatever you want on on just a click of buttons otherwise you know you are scanning through reports you are turning pages etc it improves the economy efficiency and effectiveness of the system and processes of course i mean once you move digital uh, you you get to know a lot of uh, turn around time analysis which you can work on that you go paper this you save a lot of money uh, you save a lot of money in terms of the process as well you need lesser people to work on the same things and enables new uh, models of care such as value based care and population uh, health management so you know there are n number of benefits in terms of the healthcare system uh, and th these are just the few that you know the report talks about and what's happening there uh, benefits for clinicians you know it supports clinical decision making of course you know with with the entire gamut of data available and the research is going on and if it is really collaborated well then you know it increases the clinical decision making that's why we see that a lot of emr or the electronic medical records have been implemented or are more uh, so the clinicians are more receptive towards that because even though it's a it's it's not you know change is never easy so uh, even if it's difficult to adapt to that but you know it really helps in clinical decision making uh, it frees up capacity by automating repetitive tasks and monitoring triage of course as it you know just what it means you just you just save a lot of time improve job satisfaction identifying and support staff uh, well being needs so th this is in terms of digital you know what are the benefits right uh, but also we'll cover you know what it is happening so here so in terms of technology healthcare technology where the world is moving wearable medical device i think uh, everybody would now agree that you know wearable medical device is the future Uh, more and more parameters are recorded more and more accuracy level is going into the things their their acceptability at the clinical stages are also you know increasing so this would be one of the bigger push in the industry of wearable medical devices wherein you club it with the uh, you know preventive care mechanism as well right then this chatbots you know various kinds of chatbots which are you know helping you uh, maybe do very sim simple simple tasks maybe feedback maybe scheduling and etc etc uh, there is machine based ai learning so uh, of course the data here when we are talking of, of the world population about 7 billion people and their data and how it has you know how it is uh, you know changing across so it it has to be machine based you know it cannot just be uh, you know someone doing it because it's it's too much data right so a lot of machine based ai learnings will happen in the industry internet of things so right now i mean i personally know you know 9 to 10 very very big initiatives that are happening in iot sectors wherein it could be you know even very minuscule uh, um, you know change in the entire process it could be as simple as just you know having a small sensor in the iv fluid bag wherein the nurse doesn't have to go back and forth to check it right so so this is one of the thing they there are n number of things that are going to come and you can see that you know the prediction is about 500 billion dollars us dollars is what the iot healthcare industry will reach by 2025 and that's a huge number 3d print, printing is somewhat you know something coming up you know i we don't know what would be the receptiveness of that uh, how how uh, you know 
the regulators would approve not approve but that is something again a, a lot of thing uh, is happening in that industry and it is really helping in terms of diagnosis etc not yet in terms of usage uh, that is there uh, online services uh, of course you know we we can talk about this all day what what are the number of things happening in online services you know uh, people are going to certain new level uh, altogether you know it could be uh, i i know i know a friend of mine uh, who's who's taking physiotherapy sessions from a doctor who's situated in new york so n number of uh, possibilities happening over there now what what we mean by experience based industry so this industry uh, till now has been more of uh, driven by you know the clinicians and the need right it has always been a need based industry but now you know customers are driven and uh, you know by the entire uh, holistic experience right it's it's now becoming somewhat healthcare and somewhat hospitality as well you know people need better infrastructure they need good food quality they need services they need uh, to feel uh, you know uh, important and they need to have that feedback mechanism right people are ready to spend in in across all sectors there are there's there's going to be parity in terms of equity in health spending but people a lot of people are willing to spend and they need good very good experience you know the people are staying for so long uh, it could be from you know daycare all the way to be 10 15 days in the hospitals so that is one thing so there needs to be a lot of innovation in products and services and tools in terms of this so what we mean is you know an entire redefining of experience patient experience right it could be dependent on you know products like you know what are the beds you are using uh, what are the facilities you are giving and what are the kind of tools available to the patient to know get to a certain level if there's anything right uh in terms of uh, sorry elsa did i see someone raise a hand if that was the case just please let me know or uh, or otherwise we'll just continue right yep we have to um yusuf and jehan if you just want to ask a question sure sure please go ahead I think that would have been by mistake. So probably we'll just move ahead. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just please let me know again. Uh, we will. We'll, uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer right now or at the end. So uh, the preferences of the patients are increasing. Uh, you know, they want to be digitally enabled. They have to feel the need of on demand. They have to be seamlessly connected to clinic clinicians. they want you know the doctor to address as much as much as possible to their queries uh, to their needs uh, that is again you know becoming a very important factor uh, in terms of driving the transition to patient centric uh, care delivery across geographies and social economic groups i am sure everybody of us would just you know feel the buzzword patient experience right it, it is everywhere it could be from n n number of small things you know it could just be you know uh, how much time it takes to just you know enter from the gate to the doctor's cabin and how much efforts have to be there so you know simple simple things like that how many people you have to interact with and other things so it, this industry is now now getting more on the experience beat the better patient experience you deliver the better your brand recognition would be and that we have already started seeing about it right so uh, future outlook what are the patient needs right so patient wants holistic diagnostic right so the, what what this means is we have to be technologically advanced 
right? You cannot operate on a 0.35 MRI. People don't really agree to that right, in this day and age, right? They need high-end technology to do their holistic diagnostics, right? So that is one of the patient need, right? They need, they, they, there's a lot of increase in need and expectations from the patient. You know, they want to know more what is happening with them. They want a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, information, from all parameters, from the doctors, from the nurses, etc., uh, they need availability, you know, uh, of and and now not just availability of their doctor, but they need options, right? Uh, patients now look for options. They're they're okay to move, not necessarily that would be their first preference, but they look for you know better infrastructure, better location, and also what are the doctors over over there. Uh, of course, uh, virtual consultation is a very big point uh, which is coming up and this is going to drive international medical tourism a lot. There would be, we will see that, you know, the primary, uh, the primary physician or the primary doctor of a patient is at a wholly different level and the patient is at a different level. They're coming just, you know, for certain um, maybe surgeries, then going back, etc. And the entire monitoring is happening remotely. So that is a virtual consultation is increasing. Patients do not want to travel again and again and have that options available with them. Health equity, people want to be treated uh, well in terms of all uh, the aspects of uh, the health. Even now, if you see at the government level, they want certain facilities that they're not okay with, you know, however things are. So that is their... Um, Patients uh, show greater activity and engagement in terms of all the, uh, uh, you know, digital aspects of things. You know, they'll, they'll just use technology a lot. They'll do it for, uh, they'll, they'll just Google everything. So, you know, there's always a question mark. Now, this is this is what the patient needs, right? Uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of use of technology uh, for health monitoring. So, so you know, in, in nutshell, you know, what is happening? These are the patient needs, right? How do you address those needs? So one is, this is what, how it will impact the service providers, right? So service providers will have to deploy new tools and services, which is medtech companies. They will, so they will, have, so a lot of medtech companies will evolve, right? Because we can talk about IoT, we can talk about, um, you know, medical variable design, devices, et cetera. So this is one of the things that in healthcare uh, will will see a lot of growth. There have to be process improvements because we all agree that uh, you know, charging for health is a sensitive matter and it's not really easy to just keep increasing your revenues. You cannot do that, you know, just to cope up with uh, inflations, etc. Wherever, whereas your costs are increasing day by day. So you have to do a lot of process improvement for patient satisfaction as well as for your cost reduction. Uh, there, there have to be a lot of innovative, uh, you know, healthcare models uh, that will come up. You know, uh, of late we, we've seen a dedicated, uh, you know, uh, post uh, post discharge centers coming up, and this is, you know, they, it's it's more like uh, similar to geriatric care centers or something, but. Now people are just giving post-discharge care at certain costs where there's remote, uh, there's, there's remote, uh, uh, you know, care. And also, you know, uh, the cost is less. It's a newer version. Patients really don't want to be in the hospital that long or at the home, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of AI data is going to play a uh, whole uh, lot of role here. There has to be, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, workforce reimagination. You know how people are working right now, how they should be, what are the approaches, what's what's right, what's wrong. So entire workforce has to be reimagined. You know how tech savvy they are, uh, how empathetic they are to the patient, uh, which brings me to the next point, which is you know just consumer trust. You have to have empathy and reliability, right? Uh, you have to have empathy from the doctors, from the nurses, from the ward boys, all the way to your billing clerk, your uh, cashier, your operator, everybody in the ecosystem. You know, it's just like a hotel where you walk in and you expect, you know, everybody has that empathy for you. 
reliability of course it's, it's nothing new it's going to be there it always has to be there but the the focus on it is increasing further uh, data interoperability you know there's going to be a lot of investment in data analytics this field we will see you know we we've seen a lot of investment in data analytics across other fields but now here because we were not having the data or we were not structuring the data and sharing it was another issue but once that is coming to a streamlined platforms we'll see a lot of data analytics happening uh, there would be a lot of customized serving offering there would be personalized cares um, there would be you know in 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 number of uh, customized serving offering that would come up uh this sector is going to go paperless there would be automation there would be lean management there would be virtual collaborations you cannot have the best of doctors for everything right then now gone are the so gone are the days of primary care gone are the days of you know just uh, uh, secondary care or tertiary care now now the world is moving towards sub specialities it's not even super specialities you need to have sub specialty within that so there would be a lot of virtual collaboration in those terms as well which would again link up to you know your uh, international tourism of course lean management because cost are going up every day we cannot really increase revenues as such at a lot of places there are regulatory challenges at a lot of places there are price sensitivity so this is uh, what is happening and there will be early intervention uh at all levels if there is a need of early intervention at all levels we need to know what is happening you know across the around us what is happening uh, you know next door and we have to intervene according to that or move up in that space otherwise we are going to lose to the competition now in terms of uh, impact on investors you know, there will be shift of priority in private and government sectors so all even private sectors you know uh, feel the risk of uh, feel uh, this is a good investment to mitigate the risk so a lot of uh, uh, private sectors people have started focusing and entering into healthcare and when i talk about healthcare it's not just you know your uh, hospitals it's also about you know iot your medical devices your uh, pharmacy consumables etc uh there is going to be lot of interference of healthcare regulators this this has been an eye opener uh, for for the entire regulators and everybody has gone into the spotlight so you know there has there has there will be a lot of interference you know there will be capping in terms of how many beds you can uh, allocate to covid to non covid and this and that so similarly we'll see you know uh, healthcare regulators coming into play uh in terms we we are already seeing a lot of shift and a lot of this uh, focus in healthcare from the saudi arabian uh, uh, government they they are forcing a lot of uh, indigenous uh, manufacturing and also less dependency on the outside world so that is going to be there uh um, social uh, of course you know what healthcare uh, is, is for investors or for businessmen is always a social image builder you know they always want to be there they would do it for not for profit reasons so we always have to you know a, a typical um, yeah, hospital has to face competition from government which is not doing it for profit has to do it for certain uh, philanthrop philanthropist as well they are also not doing it for profit and in between you somehow have to manage for profit hospitals as well so that is going to be there there's going to be a lot of improvement and in, uh, innovation especially around you know uh, this uh, it and other industry so you know insurance is going to go right uh, the more and more people are going to get insured in, in all the economies even if when i talk about africa you know in general we see around 20 22% people uh, in the de developer more developed economies uh, having insurance when we come to india it's about 40 45% so insurance industry will pick up that would uh, be there the it industry for data analytics and other things would be there mergers and acquisitions and collaboration is another big thing that we'll see happening everywhere what has happened is there is there is a lot of saturation happening in the western world they have to move 
towards the asian economies and african economy to you know in, in improve their margins to sustain as well there will be lot of cross border collaborations in terms of uh, manufacturing of uh, pharmacies consumables you know, all all types of drugs even in terms of uh, you know uh, manpower uh, providing of manpower so there would be so you you'll see like a lot of uh, mna and collaboration uh, activities happening in healthcare very soon and there will be a lot of emerging disruptors in terms of mostly i would say uh, digital right it could be for your hmis it could be for data uh, you know a lot, lot of people are entering this uh, uh, segment and and we expect a lot of uh, disruptions happening in this industry now at this point of time so uh, to to conclude you know what what we've covered this far so preventive care is going to play a role people have to understand uh, more about prevention and um, you know those kind of formats will develop there has to be personalized services and personalized services can be a number of things it can be a you know an entire package of prenatal and antenatal care and along with that you can maybe just you know postnatal have a, a package and could be another you know one one and a half hour, one one and a half year something duration service other personalized services uh, can also uh, has has to also evolve it will be technology driven which is absolutely there's no uh, two uh, opinion on that there, there's going to be a lot of technologies which will come into play uh, virtual care is going to be uh, the next thing you know people it, it's not easy even now if we see it's, it's been a year vaccinations are there and etc but people are not allowed to travel freely in across countries and people now have got a sense of another option right now they have tasted that there is an option of virtual care so why not take it so they are going to demand more and more out of it so we will see lot of um, things coming so uh, very recently uh, we had the company uh, establish a sector wherein they had a very um, limited uh, you can say uh, pathology setup very limited radiology setup only x ray in smaller smaller villages and then the doctor is faced here in a in a bigger city and patients would go in that center and get virtual care here this this is a hybrid right so a lot of things will uh, evolve uh, in those things uh, patient experience has to be key people are now people are now demanding they are paying money and they are demanding and uh, there will be a lot of collaborations in mna and so as we just discussed so this is about it from my side uh, let us open the floor to question and answers um yes yusuf has posted a question he has asked what is the relationships between future outlook patient needs sorry uh, so yeah, uh, yusuf has posted a question he has asked what are the relationships between future outlook patient needs uh, yusuf can you unmute yourself i would like to understand your question more or elsa would you just repeat it one last time sorry i am not able to uh, get what he wants to do no problem he is asking uh, what are the relationships between future outlook and patient needs okay so uh, okay okay i got i got your uh, question now so basically what we are saying uh, yusuf is you know uh, the patient needs that are there will drive the future outlook right it could be so when when we go uh, deep dive so you know what is happening what are the patients wanting right that is now earlier this was entirely you know this industry was supply driven right now it is demand driven the demand will come from the patients and accordingly we will have to act on it and that is how we will uh, you know the future of the industry will change uh any other question yeah uh, mr tushar please uh, go ahead yeah. Uh, yeah please yeah yes that was a nice uh, uh, insight i have a query
कि इन टर्म्स ऑफ द गैप बिटवीन द न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज विच आर कमिंग इन एंड द रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क विच गवर्नस दैम टू मेक इट अवेलेबल टू द मासज देर इज अज गैप करंटली एंड द टेक्नोलॉजीज आर रेडी बट द रेगुलेटर्स आर नॉट रेडी विद द टेस्ट विथ विच दे वुड बी एबल टू मेजर एंड अप्रूव दीज technologies so do you see any uh, private play into this or how how can this gap be uh, bridged so i think that's a fantastic uh, you know uh, or, or uh, you know that's a fantastic observation that you have out there tushar and and it is absolutely true that you know a lot of things are out there in terms of technology etc and the regulators are not really receptive about it or not taking it uh, in the approval mechanism fast or something but see what has happened is if you see the before covid you know it used to take the fastest vaccine if i'm not wrong got approved in 4 years 6 months or something right now we we see that you know with all the three four phases of trials etc the vaccines got approved faster the who had you know approved a lot of treatments uh, and vaccines uh, for for this so it is again there is a shift on the demand side right now as much as pressure will come from the demand side of things you know we will see lot of movement of course there will be uh, challenges from the regulatory side but you know you see even at the economies where the regulations are very strictly bound they have faced that there is a gap and we need to act aggressively on it otherwise there would be challenges so uh, and again typically uh, you know just giving an example again how you know uh, saudi is opening up itself and really you know pushing for uh, in house uh, manufacturing with the approvals and other things as well so uh, they are typically facing this challenge and would want a lot of uh, uh, aggression you know the the uh, entire uh it's so part of regulatory process is one and then the government initiatives are other so government wants to do a lot of initiatives and they are really pushing aggressively on the regulators to take the process more faster of course that being said you know regulators have to do their own uh, job because at the end you know they they are the one who will have to face the music if anything goes south so uh, but to sum it up i feel this challenge is there is going to be there but with with uh, better need with better data to you know explain your uh, processes uh, explain your uh, you know hypothesis it would streamline or you know maybe uh, make the duration shorter yeah so my question second the subsequent part of that was would would you see any play between private and government sectors for this regulatory approval is there any scope yeah i i think there should be uh, we are already seeing you know lot of uh, play coming into picture where you know private sectors have, so, so the regulators have been uh, the private sectors have been approached by the regulators to form their sub committee to give representations from their side and the government or the regulators are also very receptive to that point of thing and it has to happen because you know the resources and the uh, the quick uh, motivational uh, factors are with the private side right uh, so there is where you know uh, a lot of representation is happening from the private side and and people are uh, uh, regulators are accepting that you now they they are really wanting uh, people to be there private players to be there great thanks yash hope this gap gets reduced fast because the yes. rate at which technology uh, uh, comes in and if there is a lag there can be a huge lag in the next generation to come when already you have x generation ready you know so absolutely and that is you know tushar you very well said it that you know this is going to be the biggest challenge that the regulators and the government have to address and i i feel more of this would come from you know who level where who is doing a lot of proactiveness in terms of approvals uh, they are now even you know giving uh, support uh, in in lot of forms 
so probably let's see uh, how it sh- shapes up but yes certainly this is going to be one of the biggest factors so need to be on the fair to to be fair to the governments also they they don't have the huge infrastructure they do have but they are not putting all that money into the uh, research facilities as would be the uh, apples and the googles who are putting money into the healthcare innovation so if huge money is being put in by the private sector in uh, innovation and the government is not catching up then definitely there will always be a gap for the for the that that's what i'm saying absolutely absolutely yes yeah yes. okay thanks thanks yash uh do we have any more questions or else do you want to wrap it up sure does anybody else have any other questions Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in on the session. Yeah, can we do a photo opportunity if people haven't left or have people left? Sorry. Uh, they haven't left yet, but are on okay. the verge of leaving. Okay. If everyone can just switch on their videos for just a bit, uh, then we can do a quick photo if if you're okay with that. And then Elsa, you can take the screenshot because I've just done from my phone. Perfect. Nice to see everyone. Ready? One, two, three, and cheese, everybody. Got it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Uh, everyone. Uh, I hope to see you at our other events as well later today, uh, and hope you've seen the giveaways in the chat. We'll send you a mail with the giveaways as well very soon.